Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and very good day to everyone. So, yeah, welcome to Sellers 2020. All right. So, here we have today we have a very very cheerful speakers. All right. <laughs> Madam West Anna Mirit, yeah. All right, before we start, I'm going to introduce our speakers today. It's Madam West Anna Mirit. Madam West has master in education, TESOL, and 29 years teaching experiences behind her. From the remote to the urban schools of Sarawak as well as the higher institution. Now, she is a coach for a school improvement specialist coaches plus at Bau District Education since 2014. Throughout her career, she has been producing results for the subjects she dealt with. One of her greatest moments is to have won the third place in a public speaking competition in conjunction with Teachers' Day in Sarawak 2019. So the strategy or GMSS that she's going to share has helped her a lot in teaching writing skills to her rural and urban schools, urban school pupils. As an I, as an SISC plus, she also shared this strategy with her coaches and she's grateful that it has been successful with almost all of them as shown in the UPSR result. So, without wasting time, I present to you Madam Wes Anak Mirit. So, the Zoom is yours, Ms. Madam Wes. Thank you so much, Kisham. All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, hold on, yeah. So, welcome, everyone, to today. Uh, I'm going to share you my uh, strategy here, the strategy that I share with my teachers, with my students. I don't think I need to introduce myself much because I think it's very charm. Thank you so much, Yeri Sham. Uh, can everyone hear me? Well, sharing. I'm interested to share this because I want to share the effectiveness of GMASS that I've used during my teaching days. And now with my BI teachers or coaches, actually not coaches, yeah, sorry, coaches at PPD Bao and how teaching can be made easy and interesting. Uh, for your information, I have shared this strategy in Sellers 2018. I also joined iChat organized by ITG Batulintang in 2018. And uh, recently, that was last year, I also presented in Melta the same thing, yeah, it's my strategy. But this time around, I'm going to share with you the impact of this strategy, yeah, the impact of this strategy. So uh, to, to, to share with you the background, of course, as we all know, uh, at the primary school level, they have all the primary six students have to sit for the UPSR, yeah, and we have Bahasa Melayu, Bahasa English Science, yeah, and then, uh, of course, my target here to share with you is the Bahasa English. So prior to Bahasa English, uh, uh, 2016, sorry, Bahasa English only comprised one paper, yeah? Uh, made of two parts. One is comprehension, one is writing. And the writing part is only 50% marks. So normally, uh, teachers wouldn't have much problem uh, like scoring marks for uh, grades for the for the paper yeah but in 2016 2016 as we all know the writing in uh, writing skills are assessed in in, in upsr and it is uh, it is uh, put as one paper bahasa inggris penulisan yeah it, it is uh, uh, this is this is the circular saying that it is included in upsr yeah and the format is like this. This is about the penulisan. It's become 100%. The way it is 100%. And you can see here, there's a lot of writing. But what is of concern of all teachers are the guided writing. It's story based on similar speeches or words. Yeah. And this one carries, carries 25 marks. And why, why does the ministry include this in the UPSR? All right. Sorry, of course, uh, one of the reasons is because it is stated in our English language curriculum for year six, yeah, in 2006, uh, five, if you see that writing, writing skills to, uh, uh, the objective is for the students to write a range of texts using appropriate language, style and form for different purposes and audience throughout a variety of media. 
and to write words, phrases, sentences, paragraph in neat, legible print and cursive writing, and to introduce the process of writing simple composition, which includes planning, drafting, revising, editing, and publishing. Yeah. So uh, the next one is to emphasize the mechanics of writing, such as spelling, punctuation, and grammar. So this is the objective of our English language curriculum. Even right now, we are using uh, CFR. The focus is also on writing, you know. So uh, before I go further, yeah. So when when this one was introduced, of course, some teachers are quite worried. But I just want to share with you uh, before I go further on the on the problem. I would like to share with you, yeah. Our Bahasa English penulisan PPD bau. I just want to make a comparison comparison and I just want to show you the performance of our English at PPP level yeah in 2016 when this penulisan was introduced in BAU in BAU for our Sekolah Kebangsaan the score was 85.64 Srawak was 76.12 and Kebangsaan was 77.10 if you see here actually we, we, we exceed yeah ours is better from uh, national level uh, but not our SJKC school, yeah. And in 2007, instead of increasing, we dropped, yeah. But of course, we are still better than Pinkat Kebangsaan. Uh, our SJK school, they improve, but uh, lower than Kebangsaan. In 2018, you see here uh, another uh, slight increase. All right, it's like increase, and then um, ours is still better than Sarawak and Frankat Kebangsaan, yeah, for 2018. And the best part is, of course, our SDK school you can see here, yes, it's better than Frankat Kebangsaan, yeah. In 2019, I cannot make any other comparison with Sarawak and Kebangsaan because we, are, we were not allowed to make any comparison, but this is how it looks like. And if you see this one, the result is not very stable. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not, yeah. Okay. And Bahasa Penulisan, writing at PPD Bau, if we look at it, this is in percentage and quality. This one is, uh, I just want to share with you the background of, of, of Penulisan in Bau. I start to compare from 2011. If you look at it, PPD Bau, yeah? On, at first it was 65, 67, and then 67 again, 69, this is within that range. 2014, it rose up to 72.03. After that, it dropped again to 70. And then it, it drops again, and then uh, it keeps on dropping till 2017, 18, 19, it increased. This is the, the, the percentage. Yeah. Uh, in 2019, we have 81%. In 2018, we have 85 Yeah. So it is not stable. And if you look at the quality, that is the GPMP or average grade. You see, this average grade, as we all know, the smaller the number is, the better it is. But if we look at this one, if we look at this one, PPD Bao, yeah, we are in the range of three. The best is one. And it is worse if you have five or, or now, now it's five. Before it used to be four, yeah. But Bao is within the range of three point something, except in 2013. Especially this is regarding our writing, yeah. It, it's not good. Okay. So uh from that. From that results, yeah, you can see the results fluctuating. It's not stable. And then this kind of result results is actually supported by New York and City uh, Sakaina, yeah, Sakaina in 2016. Well, the reasons why they made a study and they found a people's composition for paper two a week and revealed that majority of the candidates have yet to master the writing skill in English. And they also failed to even produce a short paragraph of intelligible writing. This is what the studies say, yeah. And of course, this is uh, the problems, yeah. The problems that we see, the problems that we normally read, yeah, from researchers, yeah. Uh, they said that students' motivation contribute, and then developing students' ability in writing is another problem. And difficulties with using grammatically correct sentences in the lack vocabulary. Uh, this all research done by Rachel, Maslawati, Nora, Azad, and the latest is in 2019. And Graham, yeah, this one is in the U US, also said many children did not receive the writing instruction at school that they deserve or need. Yeah. And teachers in Malaysia, in Malaysian school, use product method. This was what Tulasi, Ismail, and Salam 2015 said. 
and a portion of students are not able to master the language upon completing secondary school because of all this problem. And learners, learning method, motivation, perception, teachers teaching might be the contribution to all this kind of problem. Yeah. All right. So I show you the writing. Yeah. This is you see if you look at this writing, this is what our students produce. You know, it is all like unstructured sentences. So if we don't address this problem, it will end up like this when they go to primary six. You see, it will end up like this. Okay. So my observation throughout my coaching, yeah, when I observe, what I often see is that our teachers, yeah, often the learners are being spoon-fed with information. They hardly digest themselves. So what they do is the teacher will, will tell the student what to write, how to write, and some teachers even copy on the board and get the students to write, you know, because they found it very difficult to get students to write. So normally that's what our teachers do. They would, they, they would find their best to help them. And sentences are normally unstructured with grammatical vocabulary, punctuation, and spelling errors, yeah? All right. So learners are not taught. Actually, learners are not taught explicitly what a sentence structure really look like. Yeah. So recommendation from Tulasi is my asalam. They said teachers should come up with creative writing. They should evaluate. They should analyze uh, critical analysis practices. They should. We should look at it. Yeah. And learners to receive. Yeah. They should be. They should receive adequate practice and instruction in writing. As this is is. Complex skill, yeah, does not develop naturally. This is what Graham said. All right. So, uh, so this study, yeah, uh, to find the impact of this uh, strategy that I have came up with, yeah, I just want to share you the aim of my study when I when I decided to introduce this is to address issues pertaining to the teaching and writing skills and ways to overcome them. And the objective is to find out the effectiveness of this Ginger Bradman sentence structure strategy that is GMSS. Yeah, so uh, this study, yeah, my it, it will be successful in my uh, in my coaches, yeah. The results increase among the coaches uh, school, yeah, in the BI in quantity and quality, or they can provide proper guidelines for writing correct write sentences. And also, they can get pupils to identify errors or mistakes in their sentences. And also, the teachers are able to enjoy writing activities as their students can write interesting stories. Yeah. So this one, huh? this is just to reflect. You see, the low passing in English is, uh, you know, incorrect sentences. Yeah. So why incorrect? Because they, they, they even like the basic sentence structure. They don't know how to write basic sentence structure. So some of them. Yeah, so they lack understanding and lack practices. Yeah, so you can see that all these things happen because the root the cause that I can see is that teachers themselves also, some of them in some cases, yeah, they do have problem with the writing strategy knowledge. So because of that, I, I say this, yeah, I say this because I experienced this myself a long time ago. So I tried to come up with this corrective action which I call a strategy, which I call gingerbread man sentence structure. In short, I'm going to use GMSS throughout my session, yeah? So, in this uh, GMSS, there are five steps that the teachers need to follow in order to be successful, yeah? Step one, step one is the basic sentence. So, they have to introduce the student what is GMSS, and they use the GMSS table. Step two, they need to make it a routine. Every day, they have to train the students to identify basic parts of, uh, of a sentence. It can be from any text. And step three, they have to do is the writing time. Writing time means they give student one word and the student will just write a sentence yeah, based on, on the words given. It can be based on anything. Yeah? And step four, for the teachers to, ah, whatever the student write, they have to check, check together. And I call it GMSS checker, yeah? They check and uh, to make sure that what the students write is correct, yeah? Sorry, I have one more up here. I think I missed it. So in the checker, sorry, in the checker, they have to check the structure of the sentence, the grammar, the vocabulary, the, the punctuation, spelling, and penmanship, yeah? That's, that's what they do for the checker. And uh, the last step is that they have to be creative. GMS creativity and how they can form that one sentence or three sentences into a story. 
by adding in time markers, linkers, adjective, adverbs. And they put the paragraphs in paragraphs. They add new info, introduction, and the ending. This is very common. We tell our students all about that. Yeah. So uh, GMS. So this is I, basically uh, I would just introduce you the my GMS. What is actually my GMS? Yeah. So it's a strategy to teach basic sentence structure, which lead to creative essay writing or composition writing. Yeah. So why do I use this gingerbread man? Actually, gingerbread man is just I'm using the visual feature only. Because visual feature easily attracts the attention of pupils who have stronger visual ability and this indirectly causes them to identify the subjects, verbs, and predicates in the sentences easily. This was according to Richard and Richard in 2009. Yeah? So uh, next, uh, w w the use of gingerbread man image also visualize, help to visualize the structure of a sentence. So what we need to do is our students must master what is the subject of this? A sentence, sorry, a sentence is made up of what? Subject plus predicate. And the predicate is made up of the verb and the complement. However, what I notice is that our teachers, I can say that most of the teachers that I see, they always say that a sentence is SVO, subject, verb, object. But if we look at it, it is not like that. A, sub, uh, a sentence must have a subject plus predicate and plus verb, and the predicate is with the verb and complement. Yeah? So this is how I put my gingerbread man sentence structure. I put it like, I always tell my student that uh, a sentence, one sentence is just like your body parts, yeah? It has head and the body, and the body and the, and the head and the body is connected by the neck. So it's then it applies the same with our sentence. If we look at our sentence, it has subject, it has predicate. And this subject and predicate, that is the head and the body is connected, yeah, connected by the neck, it's the verb. It's connected to the shoulder, to the leg. Okay, the body that is the complements. Yeah. So this is the 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 what do you call it? The structure that I introduced to the students, and also this is another structure. So these are the things that the teachers have to make the student understand. They must understand. So every time they teach the student, they must ask them. Um, for example, the sentence. They give them the sentence. So we ask, what is the head of the sentence? Sentence. What is the body? What is the, you know, what's the neck? And all those, yeah? So when we do this with students, they understand it better or easier for them to understand because we're talking about the head, we're talking about the body, and, and uh, we show them, uh, in, uh, we demonstrate to them. So it's easy for them to understand. That's my experience and also my teacher's experience. Okay, GMS as a routine is, you ask them to identify this every day, yeah? Every day, we get them to identify it in any sentence. All right. Next is uh, hold on, huh? All right. So we also need to tell our students, yeah, what are the subject of a sentence? We need to let them know what we normally what we what happened to our teachers is that we don't really introduce to our kids, yeah, what is subject, what can become our subject, yeah. So we have to tell them there are three types of subject, three types of subject. So let them know. Yeah. So they have to do all this. I'm not going to explain in detail what my what my uh, what they call it my mm, strategy is. I'm just going to share with you just like that. Yeah. So we need to introduce to a student the subject of of a, a sentence. So easy for them to write. Next, we need to tell them types of verbs. What are verbs? There are three types of verbs. They have to know verb, action verb, linking verbs, helping verbs. They need to know all these. And also, we need to, sorry, we need to tell them predicate. Yeah, the predicate, as what I have mentioned earlier, predicate is made up of the ver verbs and verb plus complement. So, we need to tell our students what a complement, not just object, like what we always do, subject, verb, object, SVO, SVO. In reality, there's a lot that you can put in. So, actually, the complement is a predicate. We call it complements. Yeah? There are nine complements that goes with the uh, verbs after the verbs. Yeah. So you can see here there are nine. We have direct and indirect. What our teachers always do is just this one: object complement. And yet there are a lot. Okay. And next is once our students have mastered all the the basic sentence structure, or if they have not mastered it, we need to get them to practice. 
and the practice is using GMSS table. So we come up with this table and we give them sentences and ask them to ask them to uh, put it accordingly. Let them practice so that they know which one is the verb, which one is uh, which one subject is the verb, which is the complement. Yeah. Uh, next. Uh, yeah. So these are the words that you can give. You can give any words and get them to copy it in the GMA sentence, or you can ask them to label it. Make it a routine. Routine for everyone to do it. All right? Ask them to identify. At first, they don't like it. Honestly, they don't like it. But slowly, once they get used to it, they really enjoy it. Okay. Okay. This one is what I call a word assignment. A word assignment, after they have mastered the... And after they have really recognized the part of a sentence, then we can ask them to write. So normally in UPSR, Kids, our kids are given, our students give picture and with words. Normally one word or two words, three words, one picture. So you are train them to write a word, a sentence, meaning every word they write one sentence. For example, Mary walking home from school. Let them write. Even if it's wrong, you have to accept it. For example, like this one, you can see some errors there. Let them write and get them to write on the board. Later on, after they have written it on the board, check with them. We have to check. How do we check with them? Check with them. The first thing that you check is the sentence structure. When we talk about the sentence structure, you talk about the subject and predicate. You ask them, is there any, uh, do we have the subject? Do we have the predicate for the sentence? Yeah, if it is yes, then tick. Next thing that you see is the grammar. Is the grammar correct? After the grammar, you can check on the punctuation, you check on the vocabulary, you check on the spelling and also penmanship. Okay, you check one by one. Okay, so uh, normally this is this is uh, what I encourage my teachers to do, and uh, also what I used to do. So we get few pupils of different abilities to write the answers on the board. Yeah, so they write on the board, and then later on get their, get them to check your friend's answer. And <clears throat> for example, here these sentences: Mary walking home from school. Okay, this is the sentences that they have. Then we provide them with this marking scheme. Okay, this one. All right. So this is how we can check. We call it, uh, I call it uh, the MS checklist is now. Yeah. So Mary walking home from school. So let us check the structure of this sentence. Mary walking home from school. If we look at it, and does this sentence have a subject? Yes, Mary is there. And predicate, yes, walking home from school. So meaning the structure of the sentence is correct. So we just take it. Now look at the grammar part. Is the grammar correct? Then it's no. Why do you say it's no? Because this is a continuous tense, past continuous tense. And when it is continuous then there must be was. But here there's an omission was. So you let them write it in the box here, omission was. Next is uh, use of punctuation. Any problem with punctuation? Uh, yeah, this punctuation, the punctuation is not correct. No full stop. So it's an X here. Vocabulary, I think no problem with vocabulary. So they think spelling, no problem. But penmanship, yes, Mary. Yeah, Mary should be capital letter. So we train them to do this to check. And we, they check with their friends every time they check. And we also check with them. But normally get the students to check. Huh? The final say then come from you. Okay? So... Uh, for this strategy, all right, for this strategy, after they have identified all this, after you have gone through the marking with them, with what they have written, then we train them to write in a paragraph. We train them to write it creatively by adding time markers, by adding uh, linkers, by adding adverbs and adjectives because these are the things that will make our story interesting but don't forget they also need to put in additional info if they need to they also need to put in the introduction the ending of the story and of course in paragraph we have to tell them that the essay needs to be in paragraph they also need to have the introduction and the ending and if they don't have enough words, because for your, as we all know, they need to have uh, at least 80 words. Yeah. So if they don't have enough 80 words for the UPSR, I'm referring to the UPSR, then they can add in additional uh, information. Yeah.
All right, so this one I call a GMS creativity. This is where the students uh, uh, learn how to write creatively. All right, okay, so these are time markers. All right, these are time markers. Uh, teachers, fellow teachers, uh, this one you can always Google this a lot. Yeah, and linkers, these are linkers, they need to know linkers. And for adjectives and adverbs, I don't have to tell you because I'm pretty sure that teachers at school, they always tell the students. Uh, all these adverbs and adjectives, yeah? So uh, you see here, just now we have corrected the sentences with our student. We have corrected it. So Mary walking home from school, she saw a house on fire, she heard a loud shout, yeah? So these, these are the corrected sentences. Next is we want them, we want them to turn it into a story, interesting story. So we add in the time markers. For example, one evening. One evening is a time marker. So Mary was walking home from school after her sports practice. Yeah, that is uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, linkers. Uh, and then she was alone. This one is additional information. Suddenly, uh, this one is the adverb. She saw a house on fire. It was her neighbors. And this one is again new info added in. So from these three sentences, our student can write one paragraph already. So this is what the teachers need to do. And this is how they train the student to do it. And of course, it, uh, we don't expect the student to master it overnight, but at least a uh, uh, few months can help them to, to use it, yeah, confidently. Okay, so uh, this is basically all uh, uh, what I want to share about my gingerbread man. I'm not going to tell you in detail. This is it. Now I'm going to look into my research, yeah? The research that I have done with my coaches, yeah? So how do I do it? So this is, this research is action research. I call it action research, yeah? This is action research because it address issues related to the strategy of teaching writing to teachers at schools where the performance in the uh, BI, penulisan, or writing result were low in quality and quantity. By the way, uh, am I going too fast? Hello, am I okay? All right, thank you, uh, Sham. Okay, so school selected, yeah? School selected is not by me. It's selected by our district, district level, based on the analysis of big data of the schools as provided in the school profile. For example, like this one. All schools, they have their own profile. They will indicate how many teachers, how many options, the results, and the pupils' background is all here. So when we uh, select the school, we will have, have a meeting and everyone will have to decide to see why the school is being selected. But of course, at one particular time, the main, the main uh, what do you call it, the main uh, factors is the main criteria was UPSL. But after that, it was not, yeah? Next, the population of my study is, uh, they are all BI teachers. Just for your information, actually in Bao, all the BI teachers at PPD Bao, I mean, those who were here in 2018, I have shared with them my GMS test. Yeah, I've shared with them. But some of them, they use it. Some of them, they, they did not. And of course, uh, it's up to them to use, whether to use or not. Yeah. But for my samples, for my samples, I'm going to choose, I only choose 10 BI teachers who are my coaches. Sorry, they are Coaches double E, yeah? they are my coaches and they are all teaching year six, okay? And I have coached them at different years, yeah? Some of them in 2015, some of them 2016, some of them uh, between 2015 to 2019, all right? I coach them, I go to school and uh, yeah, as a coach, yeah? So uh, nine of the teachers are from the selected school. But one is a volunteer. This particular teacher, actually her school result is very good. 100%, every year 100%. But she is not happy with the quality of her results. So she requested that I coach her. So this lady, uh, this teacher is a volunteer. So the background of my, um, uh, my samples, yeah. Uh, eight of them, uh, they are very, ex they are they are all otai otai like myself lah. Huh? They are between the age of forty one to sixty, except two of them. 
They are between the age of 21 to 30. They are young, two young teachers, and they are all optionists. They are all uh, English graduate teachers, except for one lady, but she has taken up PITO. PITO is Program Intervency uh, apa nama? Tukar, uh, Option. Yeah? So this lady, she changed. So she is she also qualified to teach English. Uh, eight, with the eight of my coaches have 20 years of teaching experiences, uh, except for two. I have two teachers. They only teach, uh, it was the first time teaching year six English. And uh, five of them are degree holders and five, no, seven actually, they said they have degree, but maybe it's not related to uh, teaching of English. And five, they have certificate to SPM. They are all very uh, qualified teachers, yeah? And they have been teaching, most of them, they have been teaching uh, English year six for five, for more than five years, except for two just now, sorry, not one, yeah? All right, my data, how I collect my data is through document and my document are the UPSR result from 2015 to 2019. And I also do class observation, but by class observation, I only show you the pictures of the class activities. And I also give questionnaires, yeah, questionnaires. So before or prior to the, uh, to the, uh, to the introduction of um, GMSS, I'll give them a questionnaire. And uh, normally February or March after the first pre-UPSR results. And later on, I will share with them the GMSS that is from September to March to September. September is the UPSR um, for the UPSR. So this one, stage one to stage five is in practice. Yeah, they practice stage one to stage five throughout the, the, the period. And part three, I will get, uh, it will be the impact of GMS, GMSS. And uh, for this analysis, I only use Microsoft Excel yeah, to analyze because it's very simple uh, questionnaire. All right, so these are my questionnaires. Yeah, and the questionnaires I use littered scales of never, almost, usually not through all these. Uh, I'm using these. I'm using these uh, littered scales to to measure the uh, the knowledge and the opinions on the statement given. All right, so my findings. Let me share you my findings. All right, my UPSR finding. My finding is just based on the 10 teachers, okay? Just based on the 10 teachers. I hope I have no problem with this. Oh, okay. All right, so these are my UPS. Oh, so sorry about it. You should have mentioned it earlier on. Okay. Yes, so please. Hello? Okay, now you can see it, right? All right, thank you so much. So you see here, yeah, from teacher A to teacher I, they all improve, nine, 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 nine. Except for this teacher J, it's Kakal. It says Kakal. Because this is the teacher who volunteered, who requested that I help her. So you see, it's all 100%, but we can see the difference later on. It's in her G, GPMP, or the quality of her passing. At first, it's 3.17 and then 3.186. And then uh, she requested that I help her. So you see it improves year by year. And she's always very happy because every year she will have student with A results. Yeah. So this is how it looks like. So for GPMP or the quality of our results, yeah, uh, if it is turun, it means that the quality of the passing is good. I have two teachers here, that is teacher E and teacher F. If you see, instead of improving, this is not. One of the reasons is they are the two teachers who only start teaching year six. They only start, uh, they only are taught year six for one year. Okay, that was the first year teaching year six. All right, so uh, even though the, if you look at the percentage, percentage all uh, increase, yeah? But for the, for the, what do you call it, for the quality, it does not. Okay? So this is, this is how it looks like. Some of you might wonder why I only choose these 10 teachers. What about the other coaches? I do have a lot of co coaches, yeah? But they are not teaching year six. That's why I, I don't put it up here. And then another thing is that they are teaching year six. But uh, these are the group of teachers who really practice, who really use that GMS. So that's why I 
I shared your success story here. Okay, so this is basically uh, how the result of the UPSR looks like. And at PPD Bao, if we look at our results, yeah, if you look at our result, the quality of our result, if you look at it, this one actually the one is, is the same school, yeah, but at least they increased in their writing. In at first it was 78, but after that it dropped and then it increased again. It's still a success. And at our PPD level, normally our most of our teachers, the results 80 plus, 90 plus, 100 plus, yeah. And only one or two will have this uh, below 60. And at PPD Bao last year, we have only two schools with this kind of results. Yeah, there are 40 schools, scholar, uh, primary schools in Bao. Okay, all right. So I stop sharing this one. I go back to my slide. Yeah, and my next slide, I'm going to share with you. Uh, the, that is the results of my my my, my teachers. Yeah, the, the school result. Next, I'm going to share with you. Yeah, the findings from the questionnaire. The findings from the questionnaire, the questionnaire that I shared with them. So, uh, hold on, yeah? Oh, where is it? Uh, it should be... Okay, all right. So, there are three parts of my questionnaire. The second part is concern in teaching writing. Uh, can everyone see this? Hello, is it clear, Sham? All right, thank you. So, the first part of the question is, I have problems with the following yeah one is writing strategy writing techniques providing structured guidelines for writing getting pupils to write correct sentences getting my pupils to enjoy writing so these are the based on the uh, research that we have seen just now so i put it up like this so if you see here most of them they have problem with the uh, uh, writing techniques they have problem with uh, providing structured guidelines yeah and then of course most of them they said the student the, the student cannot correct their own sentences. There are eight of them. But getting my people to enjoy writing on this set of them, meaning uh, indeed the student enjoy the writing. Huh? So this one is before GMS. This is what they have. They have problem with uh, trying to give guidelines to the students and trying to get the students to write correct sentences. Yeah? And next, yeah? next is after GMS. After GMS, this is what they provide. This is what they share with me. They said at least they know what is a workable strategy for the student. Five more than a half of them say they are. They know, and they can carry out suitable techniques writing for the students. Seven of them provide structured guidelines for writing. You see here eight of them, and this one is the most beautiful one that I see. Teach my pupils to write correct sentences. All of them agreed that the GMSS helped them to teach the people to correct. To write correct sentences yeah and of uh, the number of them is trying to get the students to enjoy the writing is uh, five of them yeah five of them and correcting the the, the errors yeah, six of them this is after the gms now i'm going to share with you uh the the the, the what do you call it the chat yeah the question the, the before and after okay this is the before and after so this one, I enjoy teaching writing every week. If you look at this, only 70% said somewhat true. Only one said usually true. Yeah. And this red, they always say that not true. They don't like, they, are not, they don't really enjoy it. But after GMS, if you look here, if you look here, most of them, they said that usually they enjoy it now. And one person said always enjoy it. And the number who said somewhat true has decreased to 70%. And this one is, I'm worried. They were very worried in the beginning, yeah? Always very worried. And then it's somewhat true. And so all of them said they're always worried when, when it comes to the UPSR result. Hey, we're teaching about the, the pupils' performances, yeah? But after GMS, they all said they believe that the student can perform. If you look at this, 60% said that it is usually true, meaning they believe the students can do it. And even one person said always and almost true that she believes the student can do it. All right. Next is my pupils can write a basic sentence structure before, if you look at before, the, the answer is all usually not true. And somewhat true is 60%. All right. You see the red one is also quite big. Yeah. 
And after GMS, you can see that usually true. They can identify it. Yeah? They know how it is. Next is my pupils can identify the subject. Again, if we look at this, somewhat true, meaning some, yeah, they can. But the 30% of them who said it, not true. But after GMS, you can see that always true. They know, all right? Next is my pupils know what the predicate is. You see this one? 70% said that somewhat true, meaning they are not very sure. And 20% here say not true. And 10% never, and almost never. But after GMS, you can see here that usually true. They can identify it. All right. My pupils know where to put verbs in a sentence. You see this one? That's why the unstructured sentences. Because they don't know where to put the verbs even. They don't know where to, uh, the, the uh, what do you call it, the predicates, how it starts, how it looks. But after GMS, you can see here, even 20% says that the pupils almost and almost always, the student, the pupils know what it is, where to place it, okay? My pupils can check. Ah, this is also interesting. Check errors, mistake in their sentences. So if you look at this, you see, 60% said they don't know how to check. And 40% also say somewhat true. They don't know how to check. After GMS, you can see 1% here said the student, the pupils can check. And 40% said usually true. And 50 said someone true. Yeah. Next, uh, next is the pupils can use sequence connectors. And sequence connectors, you see, it's 70%. They cannot. After, you can see they improve. They still want 10%, but you see that it, it changed, yeah? And my pupils can write variety of sentences. Ah, you can see that 50% said not true and somewhat true, but later on, after GMS, you can see improvement here, all right? My pupils can write interesting story. No, 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 you will look at 60%. After that, 50% said usually true. My pupils are confident in doing writing activities. Ha, huh, you see it's 70% no. But after GMS, at least they said somewhat true. And 20% is they're saying usually true. Yeah. So when I ask them if GMSS is recommendable, all of them said yes. Why yes? They said that pupils know how to write correct sentences, interesting sentences. My pupils can write simple sentences used. Ah, you see, these are all their, their reasons for using it. They all said that they're, it's uh, for their, what they call it, for writing correct sentences. And they build up their confidence, yeah? So all of them say that GMS really helped them, even the struggling students, yeah? And uh, they, write, they like it, it was easy, and they enjoy it. They have confidence. And they can write better, even though it takes time lah, for them to, in, uh, to write good writing. And they can easily write structured sentence and writing uh, interesting essay. And he or she herself have more confidence in teaching people in the writing strategy. Okay, so this is my finding. All right, so I stop sharing here. Uh, next, I some of the photos. Lah. Here are some of the photos. Uh, activities in the class. So the teacher will put up this. And they write on the board, huh? they identify, they do it. So the teachers, one of my teachers will put this in the class that, that, that's who sent to me. Actually, the other teachers are also doing the same thing. All right. Okay. So my discussion, by using the strategy closely, eight coaches were able to improve. Uh, sorry, to improve, not be, huh? the quantity and quality of the Bahasa English Penulisan. To increase in their quantity, but not the quality. Uh, data shows that it was the, their first time teaching English. I mentioned it. With the structured guidelines given, the pupils were able to identify the errors and mistakes in the sentences, and all 10 coaches agreed to this. They were more happy to teach writing because they have the confidence, pupils enjoy the activities, believe the pupils will perform in UPSL, and they all agreed with the SS recommendable. And my conclusion, GPM has helped the teachers to develop the pupils' writing skill by improving their, uh, by showing that their UPSL has improved. Uh, uh, they are writing basic sentences correctly, identifying errors and mistakes in the sentences, expanding simple story into an interesting one, and enjoying their writing activities. So teachers, if you are interested, actually the use of DGMS is actually can 
help you to make writing easy and interesting. So, so I think that's all from me, Hisham. Thank you so much. So should they need their help, they can always contact me. That's my contact number. Yes. Don't go anywhere. All right. We have a Q&A session with Madam West. So now I'm open up to everyone. Just unmute your mic and then you can ask anything to Madam West. I feel like I want to be a teacher, Madam West. Can I? Ask me a question before I ask you the question. <laughs> All right. All right. Everyone or anyone? Uh, yeah, I have a question. All right. It's All right, from... Regina. Okay, yeah. Regina, is it? Madam uh, Regina. Yes, thank you for sharing. It was a very interesting session. I just, uh, I feel that one of the reasons the success of this program is because of the of the coaching that you did. So I would like to know, uh, how did you do the coaching? Was it uh, on the lesson plans or did you go into the classes? Can I know more about oh, okay. coaching? Yeah, session, because that helped okay. a lot. All right, coaching, yeah? So coaching, actually in coaching, as a coach, yeah, when we go to school, of course, we sit in the class. We have to check the RPH. And of course, as a coach, we don't always tell them what to do. They are the person who tell us what they want. And of course, when they need help, for example, like this UPSR, this one is my intervention. Of course, I have to share with them. And, uh, and during the discussion or whatsoever, of course, that is where also we share uh, this uh, GMSS. Yeah. So we do sit in the class. We do sit in the class, and every issue that we see, and we don't have the information. We sit down and discuss. And my answer is Thank you. Yes, thank you. My phone number. Uh, maybe if you need, it, can I just mention it and you write it down? Zero one nine. Wow, everything is getting. Eight four seven. Two four two seven. I'm very much willing to help anyone with this strategy. So I need to answer to this Moni Monica Dampa. Monica, okay, where Monica are you, Dampa? Monica? Sure. Hi, Monica. Okay. She asked me, how does it come? Uh, how did I come about it? Okay, Monica, when I was teaching myself, I had hard time trying to tell my kids how to write. So in the end, I start, suddenly I remember, oh, a sentence is like my body. I do have the head and it has the body, you know. And I was and I was teaching my students whenever I teach them, I would be dancing with them and telling them this and that, you know. So during one of our courses, that is our SIC courses, so one of my friends suggested, West, that's very interesting. Use it as gingerbread man. So that's our gingerbread man. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. Any other question? Yeah, we still have plenty of times, madam. Plenty of times? Yeah, okay. not really, but maybe you can give about um, 7 to oh, 10 Can minutes. I ask a question now? No. Remember, Silas has gifts for you. Yeah, true. One question. The person who can answer me will receive it from Mr. Hisham. Mr. Hisham, take notes, yeah? All right, my question. Are you ready? Uh, can we just open all the video first? Yeah, that's it. Please show me your face. I want to see you guys. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. hi. Alright. My question. All right. How many steps in GMS? And what are they? How many steps in GMS? And what are they? Oh, Regina. Yes, Regina. Hi. Hi, Hisham. Pay attention, Hisham. Hi. Five, is it correct? Yeah, five. What are they? Uh, basic sentence. Yeah. Uh -huh. Routine. Uh huh. Writing time. Yes. GMS checker. Mm -hmm. GMS creativity. Wow. Thank That's you. correct, Hisham. All right. Good. Uh, your understanding, yeah. Why do we use time markers? To write a story. When we write story, it's important to put in time markers. Give me one example of time markers and why do we need to put it in our story, in our essay? Can I Anyone? Have time markers is that so the pupils know how to practice their sentence in their daily life. That's it. 
<laughs> so that they know they know um the difference between past tense and present tense. Okay. All right. Almost there. Any any other answers? Uh, thank you, Nadira. There's one for her, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, one for yeah. her. Can we have another one? Because I remember can I, that. Can I try? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, another one is for the student to select whether they use past tense or future in a sentence so that they will be able to choose which is the correct time frame uh, in writing the story or sentences. All right. It's almost the same like her, right? It's, but it's clearer. Okay. Vanessa Ungun. Hisham, take note. Three. We have three. Okay, congratulations. You will receive 50 ringgit telco. Is it? World voucher. Yeah. Huh? Yes. So it's for Regina, Nunarira, and Vanessa. Congratulations. Yeah, I can okay. top up and buy a quota. <laughs> to do Zoom with the student. Don't forget to provide me one also, Hisham. Huh? Ah. Any, other, any other thing that you would like to share with me, teachers, friends? Anyone? Hello. Before we call it a day, right, Hisham? Yeah. Hmm. Any more? We still have three more minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, is it, Hisham? No? Yeah. Two more minutes, is it? Any more yeah. questions? Oh, uh, it's from Monica Dampa, is it? What? Hello, Monica Dampa. Yes, Monica. Yeah. We can't hear you, Monica. We can't hear you. Unmute your. I think me maybe check. she have problem with the mic. Is it? Ah, oh. they have problem with the mic, and then she want to just chat us. But we have. Okay. Any other questions? All in all, how do you find this sharing? Thumbs up if you think it's good and you can apply it with your students. Thank you. Madam West. Yes. Yes, Benita. Uh, Monica already uh, put her questions in the chat. Oh, where is it, Monica? I cannot see it, Monica. Monica, I can't see anything on the screen. Is it because of my poor coverage? That, you, that's you what I see. Chat, chat. The chat, is it? Chat, chat, chat. I have Where is it? with my mic, man. Uh, can someone else read it for her? Oh, here it is. I problem um, it with my mic again. Okay. Okay. I'm interested with the body structure. So what okay. is Hello, the Hello, may I know who is talking? Uh, <laughs> it's me, Hisham. I'm just... Oh, 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 okay, Hisham again. All right, I just read it from Monica Dampai. Right? So I'm interested mm -hmm. with the body structure. So what is the head, hands, and legs? Is it? Oh, okay. You want to know what are the hands and the legs? Remember com the complement? The complement? What, what are the parts of the complement? They are the articles, right? Articles. Your hands can become the articles. It can become the adjectives. It can become the ad adverbs. Yeah, that would be the past. Okay, so that is how I normally do it. It's up to you to be creative on the, the body part, the legs, you know, and the tummy. You know, it's up to you to show them what are all those. But most importantly, they know the basic sentence. All right, because that from basic sentence they can. Um, Madam. Yes. Hello. Uh, so, Madam West, this technique is actually to, yeah. Uh, so this technique is actually to help the pupils to remember the aspect of writing, the aspect of sentence structure, right? Yes. Yes. You know, when I when I was in school, I have one or two students. They fail their bahasa Melayu, but they fail my they pass my English just because they can write. Some of them, the spelling is wrong. The spelling is wrong, but they are given mark because the structure is correct. Because if you are UPSR markers, you know why. Because in UPSR, they don't, when they first check, they don't look at the spelling. They look at the structure. If the structure is correct, then marks is given. But sometimes we teachers, when we mark our students' work, when we see everything is terbalik, tertunggang, kebalik, we immediately give zero. 
Yeah. So next time, uh, be more this one. You have to read whether the structure is correct. If structure is correct, then give it much, much will be there. Okay. Okay, over to you, Hisham. I think that's all from me. We take photo first. All right. So before we end this session, we have to, yeah, as usual, have a photo session with me, okay, <laughs> and Madam. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. So everyone, first pose is um, peace. Please okay? show your face. Peace, everyone. all right. Okay, everyone first, peace, two, peace. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, two thumbs up. One, <gasps> two, three. One, two, three. Okay, last. See? Everyone know this. All right. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right. So, thank you so much. Um, so, I guess we'll finish here. So, on behalf of uh, the Sellers 2020, uh, we'd like to say, I would like to express my gratitude to all of you for join us, joining us today. So, to Madam West Mirit, thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. So, uh, we hope to see you guys on the next session, maybe, for tomorrow. Yeah, so, see you tomorrow. Okay, so that's all from me. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Madam West, and thank you to all of you. Yeah, thank you. Have thank a good you. day. Thank have a nice day ahead. Have a great day. All right. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, to Madam Regina, Nunadira, Venisa, Ugun, and Monica Dampa. We are from Sellers. We'll contact you personally, yeah? Okay? For that 50 ringgit voucher. All right. All right. Buy a quota. All right. Thank you so much. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye, I everyone. Can sleep well tonight. <laughs>